Linger by the Cranberries is an absolutely stunning song. We've got four chords and one rhythm throughout the song. We're going to be taking a look at the acoustic guitar strumming part. We'll break down the intro, the outro, picking patterns, and also look at the chords and strumming pattern that will take you through the song. It's an excellent song to sing your heart out to. the intro picking pattern first. I'm using a pick today, you can use your thumb or your fingers, whatever suits. We begin with our fretting hand, placing that onto the common up and D chord chip. What we're not doing in this section is playing the up and D string, string four. So we'll start from the G and play G, B, E, three, two, one. And the pattern goes like this. So we repeat that little sequence four times. One, two, three, four. And then on our fretting hand, take the index finger off string three, off the G string, and play the same sequence again four times. One, two, three, four. So putting those two together, We play that sequence through four times for the intro. What happens here immediately after the picking pattern is a segue of chords that takes us from the slow down picking pattern to the full speed of the actual song and strumming pattern. So I'm gonna jump to the main strumming pattern and the chords for the bulk of the song and then come back and show you how to play the segue. The chords we need for the song are D, including the open D string now, A, C and G. Moving on to the strumming pattern. Three, four. Looking at the strumming pattern now, we'll build up the foundation of that using muted strings before we introduce the chord pattern. We're going to break this down, muting the strings to begin with, by placing our fingers lightly on the strings using the fretting hand to create the percussive effect. Slow down the strumming pattern one time round is this. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I'm going to slow that down even more. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. As you may have noticed, there are accents on certain beats that contribute to the drive of the song. The accents fall on beats one, four in the first bar, and then three on the second bar. So we have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. When we play an accented note, we put a little bit more pressure into the strum so it makes the beat stand out more prominently. Once we go back to the beats in between, we reduce the pressure so we can hear the definition between the two. 
I'll play a sequence of four times the two bar rhythm, slowed down, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Putting that into context of this song, we have the four chords D, A, C and G. We play the strumming pattern twice for each chord. So for the D chord, so I'm going to run the sequence for you now, slow down and then we'll speed it up so you can hear how it sounds in context of the actual speed of the recording. Three, four, one and two. And now at the speed of the recording, three, four. If you'd like an easier strumming pattern, the simplest thing you can do is four down strums. So you would have D, two, three, four, and again, two, three, four, change to A, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, change to C, one, two, If you want to add a bit more complexity, you can introduce an upstrom just before beat three. Down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, change to A. Down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, C. Down, up, down, down, one, two, three, four, G. That will get you started if you're not ready for the complexity of the original rhythm. Either way, build it up nice and slow. If you want to sing along, this might be your best option in the beginning as you build up that ability to play that song through. I'll play through verse four now a little bit slower than the recording so you can hear how we put that together. Two, three. If you don't let it burn to the chorus now we have the same chord sequence and strumming pattern three four in so deep such a fool for you wraps around your finger blinker do you have to do you have to 
following the intro, verse one and chorus one, we then have a verse two and chorus two, which have exactly the same structure. We have an instrumental then that follows the chord sequence once, and we come back in for two repetitions of the chorus. Now that we've established the strumming pattern for the song, I'm gonna go back and talk you through the segue that comes between the intro, the picking intro, and when the actual full strumming pattern comes in. The chord sequence we already know is D, A, C, and G. Due to the picking pattern at the beginning, covering the D chord essentially, we don't play the D chord in the segue. So look at it like we've already played it in the picking pattern. We come in on the A chord and we played the first half of the strumming pattern that we've established already. Then change to the C. And then change to the G. After which we would go into the verse. If you want to bring out the chord tones you can hear in the recording, there's actually an A6 in there. So the best way to do that in this context is to play the A chord and then use your pinky on the second fret of the E string or string one. So you're pressing four strings down, you get this sound. And we do down, down, up, down, up. And on the final long down, we take our pinky off to play the A. Once you've played the final two choruses in the song, we have one times round the chord pattern once more, and then we have the picking outro. As you can see, it's very reminiscent of the intro picking pattern. We have the same two chord shapes here. So we're going from the up and D chord shape and then taking the index finger off but the rhythm is slightly different. We start on the G string, string three, and the sequence we play is G, E, B, G, E, B, G, E. We then take our index finger off the fretting hand and we repeat the sequence. So that repeats. Here's a playthrough of the intro, verse one, chorus one, verse two, and chorus two, so you can hear how that structure works when we put it together.
This lesson here covers another 90s sing-along classic, What's Up by the Four Non Blondes. I'll see you next time.